coming up tonight on the News at 6. Lewis and Clark County authorities confirmed the first positive cases of COVID-19 inside the detention center. What steps are being taken in response? Plus, crews begin work on the new Montana Heritage Center. From Montana's news leader, this is MTN News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the News at 6. I'm Andy Curtis. And I'm Marion Davidson. Thanks for joining us this evening. New information tonight in the COVID-19 situation at the Lewis and Clark County Detention Center. County authorities confirmed their first COVID-19 cases inside the detention center. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian tells us what steps are being taken in response. From the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, Sheriff Leo Dutton says their goal has been to keep cases out of the Lewis and Clark County Detention Center. Now they have to shift to managing a case inside. Dutton says a county detention officer tested positive Tuesday after reporting symptoms. Since then, all detention center staff and a majority of inmates have been tested. On Wednesday, results showed one inmate had tested positive. Dutton says they have placed everyone in that inmate's pod on quarantine for the next 14 days. The people that were in the pod have already been exposed to the inmate who had it. So having just one separate one is not going to work. They've already been exposed. The sheriff's office is still waiting on other test results. They aren't yet releasing the number of negative tests. More than 100 inmates are currently inside the jail. About a third of them have refused COVID testing. Without a court order, we can't demand that they submit to a test. Dutton says leaders had already made changes inside the jail in an attempt to limit COVID-19 risk. They expanded cleaning efforts, and they are now having all detention officers wear N95 masks. As before, we've offered masks to inmates, and we've offered masks again. A lot of them are not taking them, some are. Dutton says the remaining tests should be processed within the next two days. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. And as a state, we hit a new record today for single day COVID-19 cases. The state announced 333 new coronavirus cases. There are just over 2,500 active cases right now in Montana. 128 people are currently being hospitalized with complications surrounding the virus. Over 8,700 people have fully recovered from COVID-19. And one of the ways we're tracking the increase in cases is through the overall positivity rate in COVID-19 tests. That is the percentage of positive cases in each new batch of tests, and that percentage of positive results has been rising from about 2.5% on August 1st to almost 3.5% today. According to the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health, the percentage of positive cases is important because it can indicate how widespread the virus is in an area and whether levels of testing are keeping up with the spread of the disease. And the Blackfeet Tribal Business Council announced a 14-day mandatory shutdown of the entire reservation starting late Sunday. The reason? The rising number of active COVID-19 cases on the reservation. According to a news release sent out today, for every two tests, one is positive. There are 86 active cases on the reservation today and a few hundred people in quarantine. The shutdown was recommended by tribal public health officials and the news release said law enforcement will be, quote, on full force to cite and find people who do not comply with the shutdown. What out there across the state today and to tell us how long that'll last, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenitz. Yeah, Marion uh, was showing her because she had extra hold air spray uh, there today. I hope you uh, wore yours. Uh, wind gusts here uh, are coming down just a little bit. We had some speeds between 60 and 65 miles per hour earlier, but uh, you can see those numbers still pretty windy with some gusts up over uh, 50 miles per hour right now. High wind warning continues from around the Little Rockies and then also off of the Rocky Mountain front there. Elsewhere, the rest of the state, I know you're probably not thinking of fire, but uh, because it's been so dry and we've got a lot of wind out there, red flag warning, still dangerous fire weather conditions, and uh, that will likely continue as the wind continues. The she blows another few days of some pretty strong wind. Possible precipitation types We'll talk about when some snow could mix in and all those baby blue skies. We've got some beautiful fall weather headed our way. Let you know when coming up. 
All right, thanks for that, Curtis. And next Tuesday, the block of 6th Avenue between North Roberts and North Sanders Streets will permanently close as crews begin work on the new Montana Heritage Center. Crews will start work first on improved parking and ADA access to the Fish, Wildlife and Parks building. The Heritage Center project is adding an additional 92 parking spots to the Capitol campus. The Historical Society has been looking at expansion for years. The Heritage Center project was initially proposed 15 years ago. The Montana Historical Society is also looking to raise about $10 million in private funding to help support the Heritage Center project. They have already secured over $5 million. And the Conrad uh, Mansion is celebrating its 125th anniversary and is taking some extra safety precautions for visitors. Museum director Britt Clark says the mansion was built in 1895. The Conrads were prominent members of the Kalispell community. And Clark says Mr. Conrad was instrumental in laying out the city of Kalispell. Because of coronavirus concerns, Clark says they've limited the number of people in tours from 20 down to 10. And unfortunately, because of these limitations, she says the museum lost about half their tourism revenue. Clark says none of the attractions in the museum are affected by sanitation efforts and visitors are simply not allowed to touch the artifacts. And we also do ask that people sanitize their hands for going downstairs using the hand railings. But otherwise, uh, our staff wears gloves and masks and we just have people keep their hands in their pockets or behind their back or whatever they need to do to not touch the artifacts. Clark invites the public to the mansion grounds and she says that the property is public and they do welcome visitors. And the interactive mental health campaign called Man Therapy has completed its two year run. Lewis and Clark Public Health spearheaded the push to bring awareness to suicide among working age Montana men. The website uses humor with sayings like, you can't fix mental health with duct tape. Nearly 4,000 people used the website and 19.8% were returning users. More than 1,000 took the mental health screener known as the 20 point head check. It gives respondents tools and tips for coping with depression and stress. And if a person is found to be struggling, they're transferred to the red phone, which connects them to suicide prevention resources. Jess Hegstrom, the suicide prevention coordinator, says in two years, 94 people were saved by being transferred to the red phone. If someone is struggling, uh, the site will actually stop them mid-survey and get them connected to what is called the red phone. And that's actually the suicide prevention lifeline. So it connects them immediately to an online chat with the lifeline. Even though the man therapy campaign is over, Montanans can still access the website at any time. And if you or someone you know is struggling, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline is available 24-7 at 800-273-8255. Two Montana schools have been recognized as National Blue Ribbon Schools, including one just south of Helena. Blue Ribbon Schools are recognized for their overall academic performance or progress in closing achievement gaps among students. Clancy Elementary earned the award in the category of Exemplary High School uh, High Performing Schools. Russell Elementary in Kalispell was the only other Montana school to receive this honor this year. And still ahead on the news at 6, the Montana Military Museum got a much needed firearm donation today. We'll tell you what they got coming up next. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Welcome back to the News at 6. The Montana Military Museum says they can now complete the story of historic Montana military units thanks to a donation of firearms. The National Center for Unwanted Firearms gave firearms that are relevant to Montana's military history to the museum today. Mu the museum says visitors will now be able to see a more complete picture of the historic Montana military units like the 1st Special Service Force and the 163rd Infantry Regiment. Firearms include a 1941 Johnson light machine gun. Museum officials say they've been looking for that firearm ever since the museum opened. Very excited that we were able to get something that was so rare and it completes the First Special Service Force story in, in great de detail because we've never been able to show that weapon. Everybody asks about it. What does that mean? You, everybody reads it in, their, in the text. The museum is working to find a permanent display but will still showcase the firearms to visitors. 
And while the pandemic rages on, we know that tourists will continue to visit the great state of Montana. But thanks to a new initiative by the Department of Commerce, those tourists will now be masked up. The Montana Aware Initiative will distribute 25,000 masks to Montana's convention and visitor bureaus and tourism regions. The goal is to promote safe travel this upcoming fall, or this current fall. And making 5,000 of those 25,000 masks is Vida Anderson, a woman out of East Missoula. Anderson was chosen out of a pool of Maiden Montana program members. Before receiving the bid to make these masks for the state, Anderson had already made upwards of 9,000 masks for donations and to sell on her online shop. But hey, what's in 5,000 more if it means keeping Montanans safe? And hopefully it'll encourage people to, maybe they came from a state that doesn't have a mandate for masks, so they're not wearing them, but make, making it as easy as possible to get one in their hands is, I think that is a good thing. And so I do feel like I'm part of something bigger. For a closer look at Anderson's process as she mass produces her masks, check out our website. She says the clock is ticking as the state wants her order ready to go by the end of October. And now with a look at our weather, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. Uh, some interesting clouds out there today and a little break right here allowing some crepuscular rays uh, to shoot through those clouds. Thank you to Jennifer Nielsen for sending that picture in. More on the full forecast coming up. Tracker weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back everybody. That was a fall day if I've ever seen and experienced one. Kind of cool temperatures, some clouds, a few showers in the higher terrain, and of course, a lot of wind. Uh, there you can see the current temperature 63 degrees. Uh, yeah, windy in the Helena area, but not as windy as uh, neighbors off towards the north, well to the north. Great Falls looking at a beautiful view here. Nice clean skies, blue sky for just about everybody. 62 degrees, the current temperature. Some wind gusts still upwards of 50 miles per hour in Great Falls. Where the winds have exceeded 60 miles per hour, really right up here off of the Rocky Mountain front, parts of uh, Toole, Liberty County, Pont d'Array County, and Glacier County seeing the strongest winds. Temperatures a little warmer the farther east you go, but even here the numbers are beginning to drop as the cold front continues to sweep through the state. Here are the sustained winds. Uh, the wind gusts are the peak wind speeds. The sustained winds <laughs> A non-stop right now at 44 miles per hour in Cutbang. That's windy even for those folks uh, up there. The wind will continue uh, here through the night into maybe a little break tomorrow morning, but then the wind ramps up once again late morning into the afternoon here, and uh, we may be looking at more high wind warning criteria uh, as far as the wind speeds go off of the Rocky Mountain front. And check this out on Saturday, an extremely windy day uh, for the entire state once again. So we're not through with the wind just yet. The rain showers mainly right on the Continental Divide and just right along the Rocky Mountain front and then west of there. Although recently we've seen a few of these showers uh, pop here into the extreme northeast uh, part of Montana. You can see a couple of those raindrops. Nice to see that moisture in Washington and Oregon and northern Idaho because those are areas that had wildfires that blew some smoke our way and still dealing with a little bit of Tropical Storm Beta. Uh, what was Tropical Storm Beta moving through the southeastern U.S.? But uh, talk about that jet stream, the Pineapple Express, an atmospheric river. You can see the edge of the clouds now actually making their way into the Great Lakes across the northern Rockies, the Pacific Northwest, and take a look at the North Pacific. Pacific. That is the jet stream and it is continuing uh, to point itself directly at Montana here. Uh, it's mainly resulted in wind for us east of the divide, but that could change. A little precipitation could be headed our way here, certainly west of the divide tomorrow, but uh, right on the continental divide, we'll see some showers later in the afternoon and evening. A couple of these showers will come down uh, east of the divide through Friday night into Saturday morning and check this out. You see uh, it's not just rain showers by the time we get into Saturday morning, some mixed rain and snow showers. We could even have a little mix of rain and snow shower activity, meaning light down in the lower elevation Saturday night into Sunday. There are the mountains where you can see a couple inches of snow here through Saturday into Sunday. 40s for lows tonight. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. Another front coming through, mostly cloudy skies. It's a very windy day with again some mixed rain and snow showers late Saturday. There goes the front. Here comes another little disturbance though for Saturday evening. 
into Sunday morning for the western part of the state. Again, a few mixed rain and snow showers for western and central Montana. Sunday, increasing sunshine. The wind will be an issue again. We'll have highs in the 50s and the 60s. And then, of course, Monday looks a little warmer and mostly sunny with temperatures in the lower 70s. Here's the seven-day forecast for Helena. So. Certainly a stormy pattern here, maybe not a ton of precipitation, but a couple of showers tomorrow, a couple of mixed rain and snow showers Saturday night into Sunday morning. Next week really does look beautiful pretty much all week long and Gray Falls wicked wind the next few days, just a couple of showers tomorrow evening and then Saturday night into Sunday morning. And coming up on the news at six, starting a new business during a pandemic, we'll tell you how one local man successfully did just that. From Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Back in April, we invited Chris Starr to share his story with us. Starr was one of the thousands of Montanans impacted by the COVID-19 shutdown. And he told us how he found success by following his dream and opening up a barbecue food truck. In today's Rebound Montana, MTN's Sam Hoyle revisits the popular Helena food truck and asks Chris Starr to look back on his first six months and share the advice he wishes he could go back and tell himself. Though operating the Rockstar Barbecue Food Truck was always the dream for Chris Starr, the opportunity to do so presented itself at an odd time. The country was grappling with how to move forward amidst the coronavirus pandemic, and Starr was one of the many Americans who was furloughed from their jobs as a result of many shutdowns. Starr made the decision to take his hobby of running a food truck and turn it into his day job, a decision he doesn't regret one bit as he recounted the long hours he would work as a traveling salesman. Now six months into this transition, Starr noted being flexible has been what's kept him level-headed during these times. I've learned to adapt to daily, daily changes, and with the craziness that's going on right now, um, you know, every day is kind of unpredictable. Though it wasn't always easy, starting a business is already a challenge and piling pandemic restrictions on top of that can easily eat away at the mentally toughest of individuals. Starr said if he could give himself any advice when he started operating the truck full time, now being six months into the process, it would simply be to relax. The advice I would give to myself now, looking back six months ago, would be to relax every day is okay. Um, you're going to get through it. People are amazing and and don't worry. Um, everything's going to be okay. As for the future, Star hopes he never wakes up from the dream he gets to call his job and keeps the truck going for many years to come. I hope to grow the business. I hope to have another trailer built so that we can provide service in Helena, in town uh, all the time. And then have the capacity to go to festivals and events and, and large scale things like that. Reporting in Helena, Sam Hoyle, MTN News. All right, and we'll wrap things up here on the News at 6 when we come back. Montana's News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 6. Well, welcome back, everybody. Wrapping things up tonight with a story you might have missed, but one you certainly need to know. It's not just fall, it's also pumpkin spice season. But Kraft might be taking it a little too far with their new pumpkin spice mac and cheese. The box of fall flavored comfort food comes with dry macaroni noodles and a pumpkin spice flavored powder to add to the classic cheese powder, along with, of course, cinnamon to sprinkle on top and a coffee mug. But with something this good, you know there's got to be a catch. You'll have to add your name to a wait list and only 1,000 people will actually get it. And it's only available in Canada, eh? So none of us are going to get it. There's no <laughs> traveling to Canada, eh? Uh, here's a look at the forecast. Great Falls, seven-day, uh, very windy tomorrow. Partly cloudy Saturday and Sunday, but Saturday night into Sunday morning, a couple of mixed rain and snow showers looking uh, very nice, though. Next week, beautiful fall weather as the wind begins to wind down. Helena, mostly cloudy, windy tomorrow. A couple of showers. All right, that does it for the news at 6. We'll see you at 5, or 10, too.